Greetings from Peacefield Woodshop. Uh, I'm out here uh, getting going on uh, what should prove to be a fun project. Uh, I'm working on a display case for some uh, bread. And uh, I'm going to try and document the whole project from start to finish. Um, I know I'm really bad about uh, just building something, showing it, and then talking about it later. So I'm going to try and document the whole thing from start to finish. And uh, I'm going to start off here with showing you my sketch. Uh, which translates over into V-Carve, and I'm going to show you what I did in V-Carve, kind of how I did it, and then we're going to kind of go from there. So this is going to be part one of, uh, I don't know how many parts, but uh, I'm going to try and get the whole thing on camera here. This is my sketch. Uh, I know it looks like the, uh, the makings of a crazy person. I suppose it probably is. Um, it's going to be a display case that's uh, 800 millimeters wide, 900 millimeters tall, um, shelving at uh, 100, 300, 500, and 700 millimeters, uh, with a depth of uh, 310 millimeters. Yes, I know I'm in America. I still do everything in metric. It just, for me, it works out a lot easier. I generally, um, I generally build things uh, in the true 32 method, where every, like for cabinetry, everything is based off of. Uh, 32 millimeter increments uh, is just a lot easier. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It will change the way you build things. It really is awesome. Enough said about that. Back to the project. Uh, yeah, here are my sketches. Um, I had uh, initially sort of envisioned a, uh, a large sort of uh, banner here on top of it with uh, fresh bread in one. I ended up changing that to two, uh, you know, to a two piece. Uh, which will be sort of two little decorative uh, bits here on top where it'll be fresh on one side, bread on the other, and then I may put a, either a bon pan or uh, pastries sort of in the middle. I haven't decided exactly how that's going to work yet, but I'm going to go ahead and cut out, the, uh, cut out these two here, the fresh and the bread, and then kind of see what that looks like and kind of go from there. Um, the shelving will be, I think I will do the bottom two shelves flat and then the upper two shelves uh, at, I don't know, what's some kind of angle. Uh, mainly for these appear for displaying pastries and things like that. Um, and then uh, kind of go from there. Um, yeah, here are kind of my sketches. This is, I have somewhat of a strange design process. I'm really good at, you know, visioning things in my head, but not really good at actually putting them on paper, as you can plainly see. Um, so yeah, we're gonna enough of, enough about uh, that. I'm gonna move on here to the computer. Um, here's how I actually uh, do stuff. Um, I created all this stuff in VCarve. Um, I know some people will you know do the artwork and things in Illustrator and then kind of move the vectors over to VCarve. I have Illustrator. I just I, I kind of find it a little easier to just do this all in um, in VCarve here. Uh, this is pretty simple. Uh, the uh, bits here. Or the um, uh, angles here, I just created with the uh, ellipse tool. Uh, you can just create the, create two of them, or create one rather, copy, paste, drop it down, and then uh, create two boxes on the sides here, and then use the cut tool here, which uh, or trim vector tool here, and then just uh, trim off the vectors that you don't need. And it's pretty simple to do uh, if you play around with this software more than ten minutes, you can figure it out. Um, this uh, is actually this area here, work area here, is larger than the table on my CNC. So what I did was I just highlighted the vectors here and then moved them over to another uh, to another uh, instance of VCarve. And uh, here we have the, the preview. Um, here are the actual vectors themselves with the tool paths highlighted. And... Um, Anyway, so I used a pocket toolpath, which you highlight them, go over here to toolpaths, and use the pocket toolpath right there. And uh, I'm using a large area clearance tool, which is a half inch end mill, and then a, an eighth inch end mill to do the detail work. And uh, this is all kind of pretty simple if you play around with the shark long enough. And then I'm also using a quarter inch end mill to cut out the uh, actual pieces. So it will give me a raised lettering uh, above a uh, you know a background. So this should look pretty cool, I think. If I'm going down uh, 0.3 inches, so uh, you know um, 
a little over a quarter of an inch uh, raised to the lettering, so this should look pretty cool. And then uh, I'm just running around the outside here, and I can preview that toolpath, which will cut out uh, the actual pieces. And now uh, we can delete the uh, waste material. Oops, and I guess it actually helps to preview toolpath. There we go. We can delete our waste material, so it will be these two pieces here that will go on top of the cabinet here for decoration. And I may, since uh, I'm going to use 3 quarter inch MDF for this, I may end up cutting another two pieces without the, uh, without the pocket on it, just to make it sort of nice and thick to, uh, to where, I mean, this is going to be in the back of a truck uh, or where it goes to farmer's markets, and I don't want it to, you know, don't want to get broken off, so I'm going to... I may beef it up with an extra piece, but we'll see what it looks like. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this cut out here on the CNC. And uh, let's say uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I guess this will be uh, part one. And uh, I'm going to try and uh, yeah, get this going here. And yeah, first round of machining done here. I'm going to turn the camera around here so you can see what, uh, see what I did here. Here is the uh, lettering. Uh, as you can see, I machined away uh, 400 thousandths of an inch, uh, or uh, about half the material thickness here, to where the lettering will be raised. Uh, I think I'm going to paint the background green, and then the uh, letters will, will be yellow, so it should look kind of cool. But when you do that, if you can see that on the camera here, or not on uh, uh, the MDF like this, it tends to curl like a potato chip, uh, you know, facing the uh, side you removed the material from. So. I cut another piece here, uh, same outline, I just use the same cut tool path uh, for this, and I'm going to glue these up here to where uh, it's nice and sturdy. And I'll actually, yeah, there you can kind of see how it, uh, it curls like a potato chip there. So, I already have one of these done here, I'm going to move over here so you can see the glue up. You will need a bunch of clamps for this uh, because, you know, you clamp one side, it kind of moves up just to kind of get everything nice and flat. You'll need a bunch of clamps here, but I'm going to go ahead and take these out of the clamps so you can see the final glue up, but I uh, just wanted to... Uh, Alrighty, I'm just using Tight Bond 3 here. I've got a uh, one of these uh, little bottles with a roller on it. Just rolled it on both sides here, um, and I can just uh, lay it up on here. Now, as thin as this is, it's kind of like clamping veneer um, where it's kind of a pain. If you clamp on one side, it kind of bulges up here, or kind of bulges up there, so that's why I ended up putting eight clamps on it, just to try and make sure it's absolutely flat and, uh, you know, really nicely adhered to it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the clamps here on it, and uh, take right, got the uh, clamps on here. I'm going to let this uh, dry here for a bit and move on to some other projects. Right, clamps here. As you can see, nice, raised, pretty much... Uh, the same there, so I'm going to go ahead and get the next one in the uh, glue up here, and uh, these will be just sitting on top of the bread box, or uh, bread display rather, so anyway, yeah, we'll get going on the next phase here.